Consider the following theorem with a missing premise. So we've got some premises, three of them here. P and S implies R, not R and Q, and Q if and only if not D. And then we've got a missing premise. We don't know what this missing premise is. And we've got a conclusion to the theorem, therefore not S. And this is all in propositional logic. We know only that the missing premise mentions the variable D in some way, but does not mention P. So it does mention D, and it doesn't mention P. Okay. Because of the missing premise, we cannot prove the theorem. Well, th that's not always true. We, we could be missing a premise, and the premise could turn out not to be necessary to prove the theorem, but apparently it is true in this problem. Instead, give at least two substantially different promising approaches to starting the proof. Each approach should show at least one step beyond a premise or before the conclusion, and you should briefly justify why each step is promising. Okay, well, I'm going to turn to my typical approaches for solving a propositional logic proof, which are similar to approaches to solving proofs in general, or even problems in general. Uh, my, my favorite is to figure out what the goal is, and that's our conclusion here, and work backwards. So how might we get not s? Well, s is only mentioned in one place. It's, it's up here in this conditional. And if we use modus tollens, that's the rule that looks kind of like this. Then we're going to be able to have s implies r, hopefully. Uh, and we're going to be able to get not s if we just have not r, which we can maybe get from here uh, as a premise. So that's going to be my last step. I am going to use modus tollens on s implies r and not r, which is a new goal rather than not s, to derive not s. And why? Brief justification of that. Uh, working backward from conclusion. Okay. So that, that looks pretty good. Let's take these annotations off. And now we need a substantially different second approach to the problem. Um, so one thing we noticed while we were doing that is that maybe we could get not R out of here. So w we might think about uh, working backwards further and using De Morgan's law to turn that into not R or not Q and maybe doing something with that. Uh, but that feels kind of similar to what we did before. I mean, maybe it's sufficiently different. Um, so I I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try working forward and see what I might do. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll take advantage of this statement up here that we haven't used yet that says that this missing premise mentions D, but it doesn't mention P. And if it doesn't mention p, then then uh, then this is the only place that p is actually mentioned. So uh, we don't really need p. We can get rid of p. Uh, and this is an and, so we can use specialization to just drop p out of here and focus on s implies r. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use specialization on premise number one. Let me go ahead and number these. One. Two, three, four. Okay, on premise number one, to derive S implies R. And why? Well, I've actually got two reasons for this. We needed S implies R up here, so two reasons. One, need S implies R for approach number one. And second of all, uh, we do not need P uh, since P is only mentioned in one premise. So we can be pretty confident it's not going to get us anywhere. So these both feel like promising approaches. I, I certainly think, uh, depending on the missing premise, they're very likely to be part of any proof that I write for this theorem. Uh, let's see if there's any others. We only need two, and I'm pretty satisfied by these two. But what else could we do? 
Well, we already mentioned we could take this and turn it into not R or not Q. Uh, how about this premise? Might we do anything with it? Well, we know D is mentioned in the missing premise, so we'd like to be able to use D. Um, so if we could get D out of that missing premise, or we could get not D, e either way, we'd want to be able to break up this biconditional into two conditionals, because we don't really have anything good to work with biconditionals, so we would probably turn this into these two. So that's another promising approach that we might take. And I think that'll do it.